Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we were given a logarithmic function and we're asked to find x. In this case, we have a logarithmic function and we're asked to solve for the base. So log base b of 5 equals 1 half. So what's the base of that logarithmic function? Again, since it's, it is in logarithmic form, we want to convert it to exponential form by using the antilog technique. We're going to take the left and the right side and set it equal to the base of the, of the logarithmic function raised to those exponents. So in other words, we're going to make the left and the right side the exponent of the base of the logarithmic function. If the log of base b of 5 equals 1 half, then certainly when we make them exponents of the same base, the equation should still equal, the left side should still equal the right side. So we have the base b raised to the log base b of 5 is equal to the base b raised to the 1 half power. Certainly, if the log base b of 5 equals 1 half, then they can be used as exponents and the left side still equals the right side. Remember the rule, we take the base and raise it to the log of base b of 5, well that simply becomes 5 on the left side, and on the right side we get b to the 1 half power. Now we're not looking for b to the 1 half power, we're looking to b to the first power. In other words, we can square both sides of the equation. I take the left side and I square it. I take the right side and I square it. On the left side I get 25. And on the right side, b to the 1 half power squared simply gives me b, which means that b in this case equals 25, and that's the base of the logarithmic function. So in both cases, on the previous example and this example, we found what we're looking for by taking the antilog of both sides. And hopefully you're beginning to see that that's a very powerful technique that's used a lot when we're dealing with logarithmic functions. You take the antilog of both sides to solve for something in the equation. That is how it's done. Yeah, you just, how do you get that, that logarithmic equation? How do you get the logarithmic? Oh, yeah. Well, sometimes you need a little work to get to this point in the first place, but at least you know how to take the antilog of it now. That was number 10.